Hi AP Research students, Mr. Mala here and in today's video we're going to be talking about limitations, implications, and next steps. These are components of research that typically come after your data has been collected and analyzed and it needs to be directly aligned with the conclusions that you're going to have from your data. So let's talk about them, what they mean, what we're looking for in the AP Research paper so that you know how to not only identify them but also to make sure they're aligned with the data analysis and conclusions of a research paper. Hope you're excited, I'm excited, let's get started. Now, typically the limitations, implications, and next steps of a research paper come at the end of a research paper, after your data has been collected and analyzed. Because you have to note, well, what limitations were there in the, con uh, the conduction of this research, or the implications of the conclusions that I have, and how can other researchers build on the research that I've done. Again, you can find that at the bottom of our overall research paper slide. So let's also talk a little bit more about what these things are. Now again, even though I said limitations, applications, and, and next steps come at the end of a research paper, where they fall in terms of where conclusions fit in are variable. It depends on your discipline. So see how your discipline organizes these sections in research papers, and that can give you a map to follow. Limitations are things that were conducted in the research and the data that you got back that are anomalies, things that you can't control, things that are shortcomings of your research, but they're shortcomings because they're things that are just outside of your control. They are restrictions due to perhaps time or resources or money or environment or that you're a high school student. But any limitation that might influence your results needs to be mentioned. No research is perfect, and any limitations to the data that you get back and the results that you have need to be included to be considered professional. So when you're considering what limitations you're going to use, there are a couple of things to identify. For instance, your analysis of your data. Did you have the proper equipment to analyze it? Did you have the proper time to analyze all of this data? Your data analysis might be a little off. There might be some anomalies in the numbers that you find. How do you explain that? Well, if you're using a lot of surveys, what about the nature of self-reporting? You can't be convinced that every person who did a survey or an interview or, or a focus group was being honest, but you have to note how you created the, the atmosphere so they could be honest as possible, even though you can't um, absolutely uh, guarantee that. What about the instruments you use, the resources? Are they up to date? I had a student who did a biology-based research paper where he investigated the bacterial growth on computers and keyboards in one of our computer labs. He didn't have an electron microscope to specifically identify all the different bacteria and pathogens on those pieces of equipment, but he had to use a different way to analyze it. He, that's a limitation. What about the sample size? You could only look at 150 examples of X from this survey because you were looking at one school, but this should have been extrapolated out but considering you're a high school student, you couldn't do that. You don't have the time or the resources. What about time constraints? If you're up to you, you, could, you would monitor this phenomenon for six months, but you couldn't because you can only do it for six weeks, and so that's a time constraint. Those things just need to be noted. Again, building off of limitations. The things you identify are things that affect the quality of your findings and your ability to effectively answer your research questions. What are implications and next steps? Implications are the so what of your conclusions. Okay, you concluded X. All right, what does that mean for your discipline? It's very similar to the implications that were expected of you in the conclusions of AP seminar when you did your presentations. Okay, here's your conclusion. What does that mean for your broader discipline or the broader environment that you're talking about? Same thing here. What do these conclusions mean to your discipline and it must be specific just like AP seminar. Next steps are okay well here the, here's the data I got back, here are the limitations, here are the conclusions that I've got, here are the implications and what that means to my discipline. Now how can people take my research and do more research on it? How can they build off it? Most of the times next steps would be this needs to be done again to confirm the results or this should be applied to these other environments you're going to get a lot of good examples from the research papers you collect. But the next steps are merely, how does this need to be built out? 
Very simple. And we'll look at more examples when we come together in class. If you'd like to see some exemplars, though, and I'm not going to go through them page by page because I just want you to look at what good and bad exemplars are, take a look at the Beauty Premium essay. I've got the link here. Here's where everything is. Again, to really understand the implications, limitations, and next steps, you have to look at just identify the research question, look at the overview, just the overview of the methodology, skim the data analysis section so you see what data they got back, so then you can know what the limitations actually are. Do it, some skimming of this to see here's what I'm looking for. These will all be high exemplars. This is what I'm looking for here. And then I want you to go to the intercultural citizenship research and look at what they've got because it's very different it's not specific this is where headings really come into play and in helping to organize as a reader what i'm about to see and just look what a bad example is because these are two fantastic examples of research and what to do and what not to do take a few minutes skim them you'll learn a lot in just looking at it for a few minutes and we're going to investigate more examples in class well that's all i have for today hope you learned something you didn't know before thanks for watching